tonight you'll hear some more of uh, that style of music at 6 o'clock if you'll be here. The group that will be singing, Free for One, one of them is a pastor's wife, one is a youth director's wife, and one is the music director at Old Country Church. And these three ladies will be coming. They are good, fine Christian ladies, and you will enjoy them. I look forward to seeing you here at 6 o'clock in the auditorium tonight. And then, uh, if you will, stay for the meal. And in here it says something about $10. I, I think that's just a beginning point. Okay. You would reject $25 or $50 if somebody will. Okay. All right. I just want to make that clear. Uh, so uh, we'll be really looking forward to that for a fundraiser uh, following the, uh, the service. Next Sunday morning, time-wise, we're going to have a done busing service. Okay? All right. Time wise. We're going to be finishing at 11.45 unless the Lord just rains from heaven and, and people start walking down the aisle. We're not going to close it out until that's done. But so far as uh, my part will be concerned and the music part will be concerned, we'll be through by 11.45, the Lord willing. All right, now you've got that on tape. It's on. It's not only on tape. I saw myself preaching last week up here, and the only ugly part I saw was Mike right behind me. Where is Mike this morning? Oh, down here. Okay. All right. But uh, you know, I don't look any better on there than I looked in the mirror. So, uh, but it is available. And I don't have all the. The uh, how to get to it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've got it written down at home, but I don't remember. So uh, it is available, and that will be published so that you can and can look at that if you wish to. In, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, and then you're going to be proud to have this this morning because we're going to change from Psalm or from, well, from Psalms all the way over through 2 Peter. And uh, I want to talk to you about the will of God and going about or how to go about or dealing with going about the discovery of God's will in your life. So this is going to be as much maybe teaching as it is preaching, but, but you stay with me and if you want to take notes, uh, maybe you will get uh, bored out of it if you write these scriptures down. And we'll review a little and then we will move to some new uh, stuff that we've been talking about in dealing with God's will. Now, first, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 says, So then, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. This, this, the idea is that you are foolish if you do not understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, and he's talking about not just the will of the Lord in general, it's far fetched. He's talking about the will of the Lord for you. And so he, the Bible says, don't call anybody a fool. But I will say this you are foolish if you do not know what the will of God is is in your life. Now, if you don't know the will of God for your life, then you're foolish. I didn't write that. If you want to fuss about it, talk to Paul and, and talk to the Lord. Because this is definitely something that is tremendously important. Now, one of the reasons why it's important is it, it, it is important for your living. Look at Romans chapter 12. We thought we were on the same page with the uh, Scripture, but it, my mind is a New American Standard, and uh, so there's a difference in the readings of the two. But in, in Romans chapter 12, 
verses 1 and 2 should be familiar to you. I can find it. Paul is writing and he says, I urge you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your, the King James says, reasonable service, but it is your spiritual service. So you are to present your bodies a living sacrifice to God. Now, your bodies, not just some theory, not just some spiritual thing, but you are to present your body, your body, to Christ. And say to him, Lord, here it is. I give my body to you as a servant. Now, in that body is the person, of course. Now, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the transformation, the will of God, following God's will begins with a commitment of yourself which involves your body but it also involves your mind. So you see he's talking about the totality of the person being committed to God. So he says your mind. Now Paul, we'll look at this verse in a little while, says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now the reason it's so important to present yourself to God is that you may prove, and the idea of proving there is that as you live it, you'll find out that the will of God, or what the will of God is, that which is good, the will of God that is good, it is acceptable. As a matter of fact, he says it's perfect. So you see, Presenting your body to Christ, presenting yourself to Christ, is tremendously important. And you don't just present some spiritual thing. You present yourself, your mind, your body, yourself to Christ. And when you present the totality of yourself to Christ, it involves a lot. It involves everything about you. We'll We'll read another verse or two in a little bit that will that will be helpful in that area. All right? So the definition of the will of God then, defining His will, it begins by uh, in the area of living. You see, the will of God needs to be lived out in your life because it is good, it is acceptable, and it is perfect. God made you so he's not going to lead you into something that is not good and acceptable and perfect. Alright? Not only in defining God's will, we need to define it as to living it, we also need to define it as to the purpose of it. Psalms 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. Now if you want to know how to live your life, young people, if you want to know who to marry, then this is a pretty good verse to look at. I will instruct you I'll teach you where? In the way which you should go. Alright, so if you're pondering a decision, God says, I'll teach you and I'll instruct you. Then he says in the rest of the next part of that verse, I will counsel you with what? He'll counsel you with what? His eye. Now, all of these verses would be good. So I've got to be careful not to preach on all of them. But listen, listen. He said, I'll counsel you with my eye. Now, how far can God see? He 
can look back and he can also look forward in your life to see where you're going to go and what's going to transpire in your life. So God says, I will counsel you not only with my mind, not only will I teach you and instruct you, but I'll, I will counsel you with my eye so that as I look forward, I can guide you in the way that's going to be good and acceptable and perfect for you. Is God's will important? Knowing God's will in your life, is it important? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, there's a third thing involved in the, in, in the definition of the will of God as to the aspect. Now we looked at these uh, two weeks ago. But, but into the aspect, there, there are four aspects of the will of God that, that I want to